Hey everybody, it's Brad. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and use TrueType fonts um, and turn them into crystal designs or embroidery designs using the artistic software, the Creative Drawings program. Um, and uh, this is going to cover a lot of the same ground that I covered in the last video, which was on um, doing the same thing for use with the cutter, downloading and using those fonts. So. Uh, if you already have a pretty comfortable grasp on downloading the fonts, then you can probably just skip the first five minutes or so of this video uh, because I'm just going to be showing how to do that again. Um, so we're going to start off by opening up my web browser. Uh, in this case, I use Firefox. Open it up, whatever. You use Internet Explorer, Chrome, whatever. It doesn't matter. You're going to start by typing in the uh, in the address bar dafont.com. That's dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. And go to that and here is a list of all these different categories of fonts that I can download and play with in the, in the software um, so in the last video I went to retro and uh, let's see I think it was on the second page the tattoo font that I downloaded where is it here we go tattoo ink this is the font that I downloaded in the last video and um, I just want to make a distinction um, between fonts that are going to work for the cutter, which is going to be all of them, and fonts that will work to turn into crystal designs, which is not all of them. Um, this is an example of a font that's not going to come out very well. And I'm going to show you why, uh, and, and this I mean pretty much strictly for the, the cutting, or not the cutting, the, um, the crystals. Um, because you can actually turn this into an embroidery design and you'd be able to sew it out um, just the same as you'd be able to turn it into a cutting design. Um, a cutting design is something this got like the little kind of intricate shading in the I and the, and the T here. Um, but uh, it's going to look better as, a, as like a cutout heat transfer or something, but if you need to have a particular font, you can always turn it into embroidery. But you're not going to be able to use every font to turn into a crystal design. Um, so here, we're going to go ahead and download this. Um, you just left click on download, and what you would do is hit open with Win. You know, well, you might not have WinRAR, but whatever you use to unzip your files. What you want to do is make sure that you open the file and hit OK. So I'm going to open this file, and what happens is this. I just have to. Whenever I open my WinRAR, which is my unzip program, it makes me yells at me to purchase a license, so I'm just going to close that. Um, so what you're looking for is the, the font file is .ttf, so whatever file in there, the, the zipped folder that gets downloaded, whatever file that says ttf, that's the one you want, all you got to do is double click it. Now, I already installed this font, so I'm not going to go through with this, but if you are downloading a new font that you don't have, you would left click on install here, and it would install the font, and you would have it. Once you do that, you just close out that and close out the unzip program. I'm going to minimize my web browser and I'm going to go ahead and open my Creative Drawings program. So double left click on your Creative Drawings 6 icon. And when it comes up and asks me what I would like to do, tell it to create a new and hit the next. It literally doesn't matter at all what um, you choose here because we're not going to be actually sewing anything out uh, unless you are creating an embroidery design in which case pick the type of fabric that you're going to sew it out on um, but here I'm just going to pick cotton and here we're going to choose new graphic and the hoop size actually only matters if we're going to make it an embroidery design and not a uh, crystal design the crystal design is not limited by what hoop you have but I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at the 7.87 by 7.87, which is an 8 by 8 hoop, as with an Alissimo. Uh, so we're going to hit finish. So new graphic, 7.87 by 7.87, and finish. Okay, so here we have uh, my design field. I'm just using my mouse wheel to zoom out to get the entire field in view. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is left click on my uh, text tool here. Left click one time on that. And I'm going to choose from these available fonts. I'm going to choose that tattoo font just so I can make my point about how to tell what is and is not going to work very well for crystals. So we're going to left click on tattoo ink. And then once you've selected your font, you actually have to left click again in the embroidery area to be able to start typing. Um, 
So you left click again, you get a little flashing line indicating that you can type. I'm just going to type something boring, Sovac. I'm going to do a lowercase. Okay, so I've got the word Sovac written in here. And you can see, as soon as I left click off of my letters, they are turned into stitches. This is something that could be sewn out now at this point. Now, is this going to look as nice as a hand digitized font that someone painstakingly drew each section in? Uh, no, no, it's not. But it looks like the picture, um, and you could make it say anything you want and do all the different fun text editing abilities that you have uh, with uh, the embroidery program to put it on a curve or so on and so forth. Um, so this is something that you can do with pretty much any font. You'll be able to sew it out as an embroidery design. Now, let's see what happens if I try to turn this into a crystal design, though. I'm going to left click to select my letters uh, and drag them down here somewhere. Uh, actually, I'm not. if I make it a crystal design, I'm not limited by size at all, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab one of the corners and stretch it out. Um, the maximum size for my cameo cutter is about 12 inches, so put it at 11 and a half inches here and then on my object properties over here I make sure that the paint bucket is selected that's the fill in spot and I'm going to choose crystal fill so left click on crystal fill and let's see the one that I had left it on last was single line if you look down at the bottom you can choose your fill type single line that clearly doesn't work it's only got the bottom part of the letters so we can go through and pick all the different types let's try to rectangle first and rectangle only fills in the bottom of the letters also. All right, so let's try circular. Same problem. Contour. Contour, well, that's picked up a couple ones in the top of the A, but still, it doesn't look right. Uh, single line? No. Shape fit? No. Line fit? No. What is the problem here? Why can't I do this? Well, the problem is, oh, wait a minute. Line fit actually looks pretty sweet. Yeah, there's still a lot of overlap here. The, the The problem here is that this part of the letter is just a little too skinny. I mean, this, if you really wanted to work at it, separate this to crystals and delete the individual crystals that are overlapping and move them around, you could. I mean, here we've got some overlap in there. Yeah. But it's not really one-click um, lettering like a lot of other ones will be if you follow the guidelines I'm going to show you. So um, the reason this doesn't just work perfect out of the box is because I've got these really, really skinny letters. And really, really skinny letters are not conducive to turning into a crystal design. Um, not easily, anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and delete um, this, this crystal design that I've made here. And we are going to go and get a different design. So um, there's a there's a font that I downloaded earlier. Uh, let's see, I think it's on page two, maybe. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe page four. Uh, where is it? All right. You know what? I'm not seeing it. I already downloaded it. I could have swore it was in retro. Maybe not. Maybe it's in something else. Let's see. Oh, no. It was in Groovy. <laughs> Duh. Groovy Retro. Same difference. All right. So I think it was in page two. Uh, yeah. Keep on trucking. This font. Um, notice how fat the letters are. Uh, you've got a lot of space on the inside the edges. So uh, this font would work well. This bubble body font would work well. Um, this one might. I mean, it's pretty thick outlines. This one is right out. Uh, there's This just wouldn't work right. This prism font, the lines are just too skinny. Same with Disco Diva here. Billow is not really perfect. Mexcellent, not really. Uh, we'll just go on to the next page and see. This one, uh, the letter, the lines are too skinny. Now this one, Arista 2.0, that would work. And Gitch Gitch here probably would. Husky Stash would work. Magnum, Summer of Love would work really well. This one, too skinny lines. Mm -mm, not going to work well. Would be good for a cut design, uh, but not for... Um, crystal letters. Anyway, so I'll go back to keep on trucking here because uh, I already have this downloaded. What you're going to do is left click on it to download, open with WinRAR or whatever your unzipping program happens to be, choose OK, 
and then le double left click on the um, the TTF file, whichever one says .ttf. Double left click on that, left click on install, and the font will be installed. I'm going to go back to my uh, drawings program where I have an empty space, and I'm just going to left click on the lettering tool here and um, choose my font. So in this case, we're going to choose Keep On Truckin' and left click anywhere, just type in whatever I want to say. I'm going to do Sovac again. Okay, and again, this once I click, it's digitized. This I could sew this out. I could take this, save it as a PES design file, uh, save as, choose to save it as a PES embroidery design, and I could sew this thing out. I could I could sew those letters out, put them whatever size I want them to be, uh, and it would be a filled-in embroidery design. Um, and you could do that with pretty much any of those fonts. Um, you know, they're not all going to work perfect, but most of them will work pretty good. Um, so anyway, now we're going to go back to the select tool up here, and we're going to select our letters. So select tools, this rectangle selection button, left click on the letters. That lets me stretch them out, resize them to whatever size I want. Again, I'll make them about 11 and a half inches, and I can tell the size right in the middle. I'm going to try to zoom in on this. I can see the size 11.49. That's a good size. It'll fit on my cutter, and I am going to change it in the properties, make sure it's on the paint bucket here for the fill, and choose crystal fill. Uh, now here, this doesn't look very good, but if you look under what I've got it set, it's set to single line, which is not appropriate for um, really thick letters. And so I'm going to change it to rectangle, and there we go, that looks not too bad. But you can choose the different choices and see what looks best. There's circular, which has them all radiating out from a like the point they're radiating out from is right about here. Uh, we've got uh, contour, which tries to follow the contour of the letters, and that looks pretty funky. And notice they're not all overlapped. You, know, you got a couple of overlaps in here, uh, but for the most part, they're really not overlapped badly, uh, which is nice. And um, so here we got contour. Single line didn't work. Shape fit. That looks okay. Line fit. Eh, no, that looks terrible. Um, you know, really, actually, I think the rectangle. Mm, I don't know, that's actually a little too digital looking. Let's say the contour. Yeah, that looks slick. So now, you just take it, file, and export to crystal cutters, and cut your template out. That's it. Pretty cool, right? Except that's not it, uh, because there's a lot of other really, really neat stuff we can do with this. Um, in the last video, I showed how to download and install not just the lettering files, but um, also some fonts that are just vector images of a bunch of random stuff. Um, and the way you use them is, you know, let me just minimize this here, I'm going to go back to the web browser here. If you look under this section called Dingbats, um, some of you may be familiar with um, the font called Wingding. It's been built into Windows since <laughs> time immemorial. Windows 3.1, it's always been around. Uh, and it's just, it's when you press a button, instead of a letter coming up, it's a little symbol. Well, these are all fonts that are made to be symbols. So you can left click on a section here under Dingbats and Games. See, we've got, look at this, we've got little Pokemans, playing cards, chessmen, and these are all pictures each of the pictures is mapped to a letter and just like the letters they can be sized as large or as small as you want uh, which is perfect it's an outline file it's what we work with with these embroidery programs and with the cutting program um, so uh, let's see I'll go to um, see I downloaded uh, the peanuts earlier so I'm going to download them I think they're on the page two of the TV movie section here yeah so peanuts gang dings um, I left click and choose to download it, open with whatever program you use again, and again double left click on the TTF file and choose install. Now there's a problem with these, it's these images are all mapped to different keys on my keyboard, but how am I to know what key is what? Which key is going to be Lucy or Schroeder? or Charlie Brown, or Pigpen, or Linus, or any of these. How do I know? Well, all you have to do is left-click on the name of the font. Left-click one time, and here we go. So 
So this is showing me that capital letter A is masked to Schroeder and Lucy. Capital letter B is Lucy. C is Schroeder. D is Charlie Brown. Lucy Cole in the football, etc., etc., etc. Now, uh, if you want to remember these mappings, you can just print this page on your printer at home. So you go up to, like in Firefox, I go to Firefox and print and print, and it would print it in Internet Explorer. You would go up to File, Print, uh, same kind of process in Chrome. Uh, you just print this page and keep it for your records, and you'll be able to see what letter corresponds to what picture of the Little Peanuts gang, or whichever um, category you chose. So uh, let's see, I'm going to do Charlie Brown, say. All right, so he's capital letter D. Uh, so I go back to my embroidery, uh, my creative drawings program, choose the lettering tool and left click anywhere, choose a font, uh, peanuts. We'll start with a P. Here we go, there they are. So it doesn't, it, it doesn't say the name um, because it's really just giving a preview of the font here. But I can see that these are the peanuts characters. So I left click, uh, peanuts gang dings. Uh, left click somewhere in the design field. I'm going to choose a capital letter D, and there's Charlie Brown. He's tiny right now, but look, I can left click and drag and increase his size, and this is basically just an outline embroidery design here, and I could sew this out. But what if I want to make it crystals? Well, I'm glad you asked. Size it to the size that you want your crystal design to be. Choose crystal fill and scroll through until you find one that looks good. Single line or line fit. Uh, and if you look at line fit on Charlie Brown, that looks pretty good. There's some overlap in there a little bit. Um, with these pictures, the bigger they are, the better it's going to be um, uh, out of the box. So here, we're close here. We don't have a whole lot of overlap, but there's a little bit of mess in here. Uh, if we zoom in, we can see, see there's a little bit of overlap. So you would actually have to go in and separate this to crystals by you know, separate to crystals, uh, and then you can uh, ungroup. And by, I right-clicked and chose ungroup, and then I could grab an individual crystal and move it. Okay, so there I just removed that little bit of overlap. Move that crystal. I'm just left-clicking and dragging on the crystals here. To, to remove the overlap, so um, you know it's a little bit of work, but it's way less work than drawing Charlie Brown yourself. I tell you that. Um, so that's pretty cool, I thought. And we can take this, cut the the template out, and put uh, Charlie Brown in crystals on whatever you want. And and it's not just Charlie Brown. Obviously, there are lots and lots and lots of these to choose from. In the last video, I downloaded some DC Comics uh, logos. I had Wonder Woman in particular. I actually made this earlier, I, I, and I saw how well it worked. So I'm going to go and do the Wonder Woman thing again in crystals here. So go down here. This was my one that was DC Comics. Left click. Wonder Woman was letter W, of course. And I'm going to size it up. And even though these lines are skinny, there's not any fat parts. If, if there's only skinny lines, then it works good for the line fill for crystals. So we take this crystal fill, line fit. Oh, that's awesome. We'll try single line, see how that looks. Single line, perfect. There's no overlap with the single line. And I can take it right to the cutter and have a wicked crystal Wonder Woman shirt or pants or whatever you want to put the crystals on. That's pretty cool. All right, that's it for this video. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.